how to set up a tent? That might sound simple, but most of y'all are doing it wrong. Let's go see if that's you. What's going on you guys? My name is Thomas Copley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a full-time college student who probably backpacks more than I study. Today's relatively short video has to do with how to properly set up your tent. And believe me, there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. Trust me, you don't want to find out in the middle of a storm that you didn't secure your rain fly on correctly as it rips in half. What I'm about to show you is what I have found to work best for me. Let me know what works best for you down in the comments below. All right, with that, let's get to it. First thing that you need to do to properly set up a tent is well, have a tent in the first place. When you're deciding what kind of tent you want, you want to think of a few things. First of all, how much you're going to use it and what are you going to be using it for? Are you going to be going four or five weekends out of the year and you're going to be sitting in the middle of a campsite somewhere beside a bunch of RVs? If so, that's fine. Just don't go out and buy a $500 tent. There's no reason to spend that kind of money if you're just gonna be going on the weekends. Or maybe you're a through hiker or an avid backpacker that goes out many, many times a year and you're in hazardous conditions, high winds maybe, high storms, and you wanna be sure that you have the best material available to you. Then I would definitely say that it's probably worth your money to get the $500 lightweight durable tent. Here's the thing though, guys, those lightweight tents, they're amazing. I'm not saying they aren't. They're lightweight, they're durable, but they're still a tent. They're not your bedroom, they're still a tent. There's no such thing as a magic tent out there. You're always gonna know that it's a tent. All right, so you've got that tent, and now your next step is to look for the best location to put that tent. When you're looking for a campsite, remember the rule of elevation. The rule of elevation means that cold air is gonna sink and warm air is gonna rise. So if it's gonna be cold that night and you camp in the bottom of the valley, it's gonna be just that much colder because all that cold air is gonna settle down during the night. Be aware of this when you're thinking about where you're gonna actually pitch your campsite. Also, don't put your tent right beside a river unless you're absolutely positive it's not gonna rain. And even then I kinda look around to see where the water's gonna run if it happens to flood for some weird reason because you do not wanna wake up and suddenly realize that your tent is now a river. Also, when you're placing that tent and you're thinking about how you wanna position it, remember, where's the entrance? I know the videos look amazing where they like open up the tent and they walk out onto the face of a cliff, but come on, if you have to pee in the middle of the night, you don't wanna step out there just to realize that's the last time you'll ever pee. Also, when you're placing that tent, look for a relatively flat ground because I promise you that even the slightest slope will drive you nuts at night. Also, be looking for some relatively smooth ground. You don't wanna place your tent on top of some sharp roots or like a sharp jagged rock or something. And then as far as you can, clean the area. Pull away some rocks and some sticks and some thorns, anything that could possibly damage your tent. The next step is gonna be grabbing your footprint or your ground cloth and laying that down. By no means do you need a ground cloth but it does provide a layer of protection in between your tent and the ground. And so I'd say if you went out and bought one of those $600 tents, you absolutely need a footprint. But even then, there's some options outside of the name brand footprint that they try to sell you with the tent. That's like $100 for basically a glorified tarp. And one of my favorites is called Tyvek Cloth. Tyvek Cloth you can find on Amazon. It's super cheap, super lightweight, easy to carry along with you, but it's going to provide that layer of protection you need in between your tent and the ground. And then, of course, you can bring whatever tarp you have lying around at home with you if you're going to be car camping mainly, because tarps are kind of heavy, so you don't want to bring that if you don't have to. But it'll definitely do the job. Your next step is to take that tent body and lay it down flat on the area that you have planned. Now your next step is to assemble the poles for your tent. Now if you do have a cheap tent, this is where you have to be especially careful because a lot of times the cheaper tents have cheaper elastic that are holding the poles together. So as you're pulling those poles apart, just be careful not to extend it too much and accidentally snap your poles. Once you have your poles assembled, you're going to slide it into the pole sleeves of your tent. What I do is once I put one pole into one corner of the tent, I'll go to the opposite corner and put my foot down on the tent to hold it there as I bend that pole to slide into the sleeve. And then I'll just repeat that for the other corners as well. Now the next step, which is attaching the rest of the netting to your poles, may differ based on the type of tent that you have. However, I found that most tents have snap-on clips, and you'll just snap each of those on in no particular order. Now these next two steps are also kind of exchangeable depending on what you prefer, but what I've found that works best for me is I first put on the rain fly and then I stake down the tent. This may not even be possible for you if you don't even have a freestanding tent. Now I do have a freestanding tent, so I like to take that rain fly and lay it down flat on top of the netting and the poles and then clip it into position first before or trying to adjust my tent to the final position just so I can see what the whole thing looks like. This allows me to kind of see how the vestibule is going to be stretching out and just if I have enough room where I'm trying to place it. Once I have my tent in that perfect final position, I'll begin the next step, which is staking down the tent. Now, as you're beginning to stake down this tent, you want to make sure that you're pulling it nice and secure from all the corners, making sure that it's taut. However, be careful not to pull too much because you don't want to risk any sort of injury to your tent. Just a little snug should be perfect. Also, when you're putting the stake actually in the ground, this is what I like to do. I put the stake through the loop and into the ground maybe about an inch, pushing away from the tent at first. After the stake tip is out just about an inch, I push it in further as I'm turning it towards the tent. The end product should have the bottom of the stake angled in towards the tent and the top of the stake angled out away from the tent. I found that this method actually allows the stake to stay put better. Now the next step is tying down your rain fly. Similar to the tent, you want to make sure it's snug but not too tight. However, make sure that it is tightened down properly because otherwise there is a chance that some rain will be able to get onto the inside of your tent. Now it's time to stake out your vestibule. Similar to before, put the stake through the loop, push it out, and then push it back in towards the tent to put that angle in that stake just so it ensures that it's 
it stays there better. Definitely be sure not to stake this one out too tight because a vestibule is pretty hard to open if it's staked out really tight. And this next step, if you're making a mistake in any of the areas, this is where it's going to be, and this is guy lines. Guy lines are basically just other attachments to different areas of the walls or the rain fly of your tent that allow you to be able to add some more support to those walls. Similar to stakes, you're going to take them and stake them out wherever you want to. You don't have to do this if you're expecting perfect weather that night and no wind, but if you're expecting some rougher weather, some extra winds and heavy rain, it's probably a good idea to stake out those guy lines. Also, some tents are made to where these guy lines can help the rain fly to vent out that tent a little bit more, the way that it pulls up on the rain fly. Most of the guy lines that are built into your tent automatically have adjuster tabs. These are little plastic pieces at the end that are going to allow you to adjust the amount of slack that you have in your guy line. Take your stake and put it through the loop at the end of this adjuster tab and then put it into the ground. After that, you can reach up above the adjuster tab and pull on the line to tighten it to however you want it to be. Now, sometimes you're going to come across a situation where you can't put tent stakes in the ground. This is where you have to get creative. Look around and maybe weigh it down with a rock or a stump or something. Maybe you can tie it to the bottom of a sapling. Just look around and make a deal. And finally, the last step, at least for me, is a little extra feature they have in most tents, which is a little ventilation window. Take the Velcro, stick it up through the windows open just to add a little bit of extra ventilation through the night. So there you have it, guys. With those basic principles, your tent's going to be up and ready the correct way. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'll see you next time.